Humans are breathing a global sigh of relief with the news that multiple trials of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines have been successful. But the threat is still very real for the animal kingdom, and that could create more problems for humans in the future. The West Nile virus is an example of how diseases can take hold in the world. It established in wild bird populations here and now has an enzootic cycle, meaning it's perpetuated by a transmission cycle between mosquitoes and birds, and then it spills over into people and other mammals every year in late summer. We'll never get rid of it because it's, it's in wildlife. So if that were to happen with SARS coronavirus 2, it would be a game changer for our ability to eradicate the virus. Tony Goldberg is a professor of epidemiology, studying the ecology and evolution of infectious diseases in nature. Coronaviruses are widespread in animals, but when the SARS-CoV-2 virus emerged, the transmissibility of the disease took the professor by surprise, and he and his colleagues wondered if it could go back from humans to animals. Now we know it can. In Denmark, the virus shifted from humans to mink and back to humans, mutating in the process. Mink are the only animals known to have passed the virus to humans. It didn't cause severe illness in humans, but a mass cull of the animals was ordered. When viruses switch hosts, they tend to adapt to those new hosts and mutate and evolve. And there is some evidence that that has been happening on, on a limited scale in mink. The fear there, I don't think is, again, some Frankenstein monster virus, but it would be terrible, especially with the great news about vaccines that's come out recently, if the changes that happen in animals were such that they allowed the virus to evolve around the vaccines we've created. Knowing what I do about the virus and the vaccines, I don't think that's a high possibility, but it would be such a, a terrible thing to happen that we should consider it serious. But there is also an animal welfare perspective to consider. Dr. Marika Janiak was involved in a study by University of Calgary, which assessed the risk of coronavirus to primates by looking at the genome sequences of the receptor for the virus, which all mammals share, called ACE2. Human respiratory viruses can kill wild primates, even the common cold. This vulnerability uh, was concentrated in the primates that are most closely related to us, but also there are some very distantly related primates, the lemurs, that are also quite vulnerable. But very vulnerable are, you know, the great apes, that includes orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, and also the rest of the primates that live in Africa, the monkeys in Africa. COVID has caused so much death and hardship around the world, but when it comes to animals, and primates especially, could it cause devastation? I mean, it could, yes, and, you know, these are hypotheticals at this point, thankfully, when it comes to this coronavirus, but Ebola has shown us how devastating it can be when you have an outbreak among wild gorillas. You know, 5,000 gorillas died from Ebola, and that is a, a massive portion of their remaining population. Is the worst case scenario for people like yourselves working with animals that there's going to be a knee-jerk reaction when infectious diseases are found in animals? Absolutely, and that is a very big concern for us. And the main point of our research was to highlight that humans are a risk to wild primates, not the other way around. Just because an animal can get infected doesn't mean that it will get sick. We've seen a couple of examples of cats and dogs becoming infected. Dogs don't seem to actually get sick based on the research I've seen. It's thought that the UK Prime Minister's dog caught coronavirus around the time Boris Johnson was taken into intensive care in April with symptoms. Cats do seem to get sick, like they seem to have coughs. Um, there was a very famous example in the Bronx Zoo where some of the large cats got infected from a keeper. But they don't seem to get as sick as humans do. And also, very importantly, they can't seem to pass that virus back to humans. Professor Goldberg says there are teams around the world trying to predict which animals could become infected. Genetically, humans are similar, so vaccines can have a positive impact. But there's no way to vaccinate every species of animal. The last thing ecologists and conservationists want to see is a mass die-out or culling of animals that have no control over the actions and movement of humankind. I have a new grant from the National Science Foundation with colleagues at New Mexico State University here in the United States. 
And we're looking at the possibility that SARS coronavirus 2 could move back into bats in North America and become established. That would be a catastrophe because once viruses become established in wildlife reservoirs, they are very difficult to eradicate. The best way we can prevent the spillback of SARS coronavirus 2 to animals is to control it in people. Because if it does get into animals, we don't have good options. It's not clear, for example, how we would vaccinate wild apes against coronavirus. You know, the two vaccines that are candidates right now, they're two dose vaccines. So, you know, maybe you'll be able to dart the ape the first time, but it's going to know the second time when you come after it with that dart gun. So our primary prevention, the preventing the virus from getting into animals in the first place is really our only strategy.